let's talk about some of the symptoms that you may have uh, with type 2 diabetes or what you should look out for. Now, I've looked at various uh, Dr. Google sites, and it's interesting what they tell you to look for, and I want to tell you uh, what not to look for and sometimes ignore these. So one of the ones that they talk about is periodontis. Uh, now, that's recession around your gums. It's redness around the gums. It's bleeding around the gums. It's deep pockets. First of all, your dental hygienist should be probing your pockets around your teeth. It's a big deal. But quite frankly, that is not a symptom of diabetes that you should be looking for. If you have inflammation of your gums, it is one of the best ways to produce diabetes because we now know that oral bacteria invade your bloodstream constantly and it's these bacteria in your bloodstream that prompts the development of metabolic syndrome. So it's not the other way around. If you've got bleeding gums or your dentist says you've got deep pockets, get it fixed. Now, this is what I do in my practice. This shows up in my patients, and this is kind of what I want to see in my patients. So take that with what I see. Now, darkening skin. It's got a fancy name. It's called acanthosis nigricans. There'll be a test. Many times we'll see particularly overweight individuals develop these kind of dark, thick patches on their neck and on their shoulders. And I do see this a lot. And many people are told that, oh, that's just a part of getting old. They're different than dark spots or sunspots. And they're actually quite broad. This is a dead tip-off that you have metabolic syndrome. The good news is these will resolve with following my program. It should be obvious, if you have a slow healing, sore or cut, particularly on your lower legs, this can be a tip off that your blood sugars are higher than they should be. Now, changes in vision. Interestingly enough, fluctuating blood sugar levels can cause sudden visual changes, but there are many other things that perhaps are even more worrisome that can cause the same thing. I do see patients who run very high blood sugar levels who have had retinal vein thrombosis. Not a good thing because their blood has literally gotten too thick. Think about pumping honey through your bloodstream as I like to tell my patients. We also know that there's a fairly strong correlation with diabetes to develop cataracts in the eyes or even causing lens swelling, which leads to blurry vision. So blurry vision can be another sign of type 2 diabetes. Many patients with type 2 diabetes develop numbness, and pain in their feet or their legs. Unfortunately, high blood sugars are notorious for killing the small nerves that are fed by capillaries. And many doctors will tell you, well, this is peripheral neuropathy. There are different causes of peripheral neuropathy, but high blood sugars are one of the most, are the biggie. Now, you'll see on Dr. Google cites that bedwetting in children is a sign of type 2 diabetes. No, it's not. It can be a sign of type 1 diabetes or juvenile diabetes. But if you're getting up to pee five times a night uh, and you're an adult, there's other reasons going on besides high blood sugars. Now, fruity breath. Well, fruity breath is caused by ketones. And this is typical of out of control type one diabetics, but in general type two diabetics who have too much insulin, I've never smelled fruity breath on a type two diabetic in my practice. Okay, so more importantly, what tests should you ask your doctor for if you think you have diabetes? Now the problem is most doctors are gonna measure two tests for you. 
One is hemoglobin A1C. Everybody's heard about hemoglobin A1C thanks to commercials. I got my A1C down. Now, A1C basically looks at what your blood sugar is like for the previous two months looking backwards in time. It tells you and me how much sugar and protein you are handling during that time period. The problem is you could have a very high insulin level and have an absolutely normal hemoglobin A1C. You could have an absolutely normal blood sugar, and yet you are insulin resistant and have metabolic syndrome, which is the real thing that you want to prevent. So please get those tests, but please ask your doctor to get at least one other test, which is a fasting insulin level. It's an $8 test, folks. Preferably a HOMA IR, H-O-M-A dash IR. IR stands for insulin resistance. If you can't get those, you could get a glycated serum protein and or fructosamine. They basically are the same test. This gives you a two-week window into how you're handling sugars and proteins. It's looking for advanced glycation end products. Let's suppose you get a hemoglobin A1C. Traditionally, in my practice, in most other physicians' practice, in restorative medicine or functional medicine, we want a hemoglobin A1C lower than 5.6. In my practice, I want a hemoglobin less than 6 to tell you you're not a diabetic. But if you're between 5.7 and 6.0, and I tell you you're a pre-diabetic, that's like telling my female patients you're a little bit pregnant. There's no difference. So, where do you want a fasting insulin level? I preferably want a fasting insulin level of six or less. I'll take under nine. Some of my patients have fasting insulin levels, like me, of two or three. My wife has a fasting insulin level less than one. I tell you, I hate her. I can't get down there. But lower is better. If you've got a fasting insulin level 10 or above, you have insulin resistance, you have metabolic syndrome, and I don't care what your blood sugar is, I don't care what your hemoglobin A1C is, you're heading for trouble. Home IR. Traditionally, a home IR of 2.0 or less is normal. But secretly, what you don't know is a home IR should be one or less. It is actually quite hard to achieve. In my practice, I'll take less than 2.0, but you'll get a gold star the closer you get to 1.0 or less. A lot of my patients, because they look at the range on these tests, often get a false sense of security when they see a home IR of 2.0. Now, if it was 5 and we're down to 2.0, this is great. But we don't want to stop until we keep getting that insulin resistance lower and lower because it's really one of the most important measurements of metabolically flexible people. Just remember, it's far more important to fix metabolic flexibility than it is to fix fix a number that measures diabetes like hemoglobin A1C. And that's what's been so wrong with so much of our management. So what I do in my practice is my recommendation to you. But ask your doctor. Ask for these tests. And they're really not expensive. And quite frankly, most insurance plans cover these tests. Medicare covers these tests. If you enjoyed this episode of the Dr. Gundry podcast, you're definitely going to want to see this one. You've been probably told that if you really want to lower your blood sugar, one of the best things you can do is eat whole grains. 
Now I'm here to tell you that that could not be further from the truth. Here's why. 